every family has secrets, and the royal family is no exception. Never complain, never explain is a mantra that the British royals stand by, and this principle has helped them keep many secrets. However, one secret that wasn't kept very well is the tragic story of Queen Elizabeth's lost cousins. Welcome back to the Told You Another Story channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about these long lost and almost forgotten members of the royal family. The British royal family is quite large, and it is near impossible to know every single member. However, there are some that were intentionally hidden from the public. The Queen's maternal cousins, Nerissa and Catherine Boas Leon, are an example of such family members. Nerissa and Catherine were nicknamed the Hidden Cousins, and the story of their segregation from the royal family is quite scandalous. The Queen was known for being quiet through many royal scandals, like those surrounding the death of her daughter-in-law, Princess Diana. She never gave any personal opinions or emotions in touchy subjects like these, and the case of her cousins were no different. In 1987, a shocking story revealed that an unknown member of the royal family, presumed dead, was alive and confined in the most unexpected place a mental asylum. The story was referred to Catherine Boas Leon, who was 61 at the time, and her sister Nerissa, who died just one year before the news broke. What was most shocking was that all these years, the Boas Leon sisters were thought to be dead. They were recorded and deceased in the 1963 editions of two respected reference books to the British aristocracy. But all this while, the sisters were alive. So what was really going on? First, let's get some backstory. Nerissa and Catherine were daughters of John Herbert Boas Leon and his wife Fenella, Queen Elizabeth's maternal uncle and aunt, making the two women her first cousins. However, they were never acknowledged as members of the royal family. Nerissa and Catherine were both born with a severe learning difficulty, and given the times they were in and the limited medical terms available, they were cruelly labeled as imbeciles. Their exact diagnosis was never made public, but some sources confirmed that the Hidden Sisters had the mental capacity of a three-year-old throughout their lives. Because of their prognosis, Nerissa and Catherine were alienated from the royal family. After the death of their father in 1930, the sisters were taken to the mental health institution, where they lived out the rest of their days. At the ages of 15 and 22, they left the comfort of their family home in Scotland to the Royal Earlswood Hospital, a state-funded mental health facility in Redhill, London. Royal Earlswood was not a standard hospital. At the time, it was usually overcrowded, understaffed, and associated with hygiene issues. So why would members of the royal family be brought to a place like this? Typically, royals who were disabled in any form were taken to a private mansion, and a caregiver was hired to tend to their needs. For example, Prince John, Queen Elizabeth's uncle, lived with epilepsy and autism, and suffered from seizures all his life. But he wasn't banished to an ill-furnished health facility he stayed in Sandringham House, where he lived before he died at 13. Other unhealthy royal family members have been given this kind of care, but not the Boas Leon sisters. After the statement was released in 1987, the hospital staff confirmed that Nerissa and Catherine were indeed relatives of the Queen. But according to their medical records, the royal family did not reach out to the sisters once. There were no visitors or messages, nothing. A source reported that the sisters' mother, Fenella, continued to visit them until her death but hospital records cannot back up even that. It's almost as if the royal family were embarrassed about being associated with Nerissa and Catherine, and intended to cover up their existence completely, even in their death. Nerissa, who was 66 at the time of her death, was given a pauper's burial. In the 2011 documentary, The Queen's Hidden Cousins, former hospital staff at Earlswood confirmed that only staff members attended Nerissa's funeral. There were no cards or flowers from the royal family, talk more of any kind of representatives. Her tombstone was made of plastic and didn't even bear her name. It was marked with only a serial number. The grave wasn't known until the shocking article was published in 1987, and people from all over the UK sent flowers and messages to pay their respects to Nersa. On the other hand, Catherine stayed in the hospital until 1997, when it closed due to abuse claims, and she went on to live in another home in Surrey. She died in 2014 at 87 without knowing who she was or having anything in her name. The situation was so intense the public blamed the royal family for attempting to erase the existence of two of its members just because of their health. They even went to the extent of falsifying the deaths of the Boas Leon sisters and a lot of people found this very upsetting. It didn't even ease the suspicion when the only comment the royal family made 
following the release of the article was that they had nothing to say regarding the topic. We have no comment about it at all. It is a matter for the Boas Leon family. The statement read, The question on most people's minds was, why did the royal family attempt to cover up its relationship with the Boas Leon sisters? On the other hand, the Boas Leon family made a public statement where it was stressed that Nerissa and Catherine were never imprisoned and were free to walk about on the hospital grounds. They claimed that there was no attempt at a cover-up and that other family members frequently visited the two women. Although they said that, so many things still don't add up. For example, why aren't there any records to back it up? Why weren't the Bose Leon sisters taken care of in a private facility? Why didn't anybody from the family attend their funerals? And why were they pronounced dead decades before they actually died? There was clearly a cover-up attempt. The tragic story of Nerissa and Catherine was portrayed in the fourth season of the Netflix series The Crown, and we got to see a little perspective. It suggested that the two women were hidden from the public to prevent the royal family from losing face in the sight of the citizens of the UK. The Queen's mother explained that two disabled members of the royal family could taint the family's bloodline, especially since the principle of heredity secession already hangs by a thread. People already have a problem with why just one family has the right to the crown, and if it became public knowledge that intellectual disability runs in the family, it could be a serious threat to their dynasty. In the scene, the Queen Mother also brought up Prince John, Queen Elizabeth's uncle, who died from epilepsy at age 13. At the time of his death, epilepsy was classified as a mental illness, so the public was already concerned about the royal gene pool. If the mental state of the Bose Leon sisters was common knowledge, it would only increase the questions about the mental health of the royals. While the events of the series are based loosely on real-life events, this is a plausible explanation for why the royals would want to hide their ties with mentally unstable relatives. To this day, the royal family still denies any attempt at a cover-up, but their claim is hard to take seriously because they haven't even made any attempts to answer questions. For example, the burial grounds belonging to Nerissa and Catherine are still unidentified as properties of the royal family. Their dates of death still haven't been corrected in the royal records, and the royal family has repeatedly refused to make any comments on the matter. Since the death of Queen Elizabeth, there are hardly any family members alive that personally knew the Bose Leon sisters, so their story isn't as publicly known as it was a couple of decades ago. However, for the past few years, the royal family has supported charity organizations that fight to end the stigma behind mental health issues. For example, Prince William, Kate Middleton, and Prince Harry created a campaign called Heads Together, which supports such charities. After all, some of the members of the royal family have struggled with mental health issues, from Princess Margaret to Princess Diana, albeit they had to get help behind closed doors. However, the royal family will acknowledge the existence of mental health struggles in their family tree and not deal with it with so much shame and secrecy. It is unfortunate that the Bose Leon sisters paid the ultimate price and it would be absolutely unforgivable if history repeated itself with any future members of the royal family. Thank you for watching this video. Hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.